Oh, it's still circling. Oh, hey, now it works. <laughs> We're live. Good morning. The wonders of technology. Okay. Yes, it is April 8th, 2020. Oh my God, I almost said 2025. Ooh, just kidding. <laughs> 2024. I was uh, talking with the enrollment coach team this morning about like where we'll be in a year. And I was talking in 2025. So that's, that's funny to think about. Uh, excited to talk to you about uh, the title, which it's kind of a red herring. The best time to exercise to burn fat. Before we get into this, I am just going to tag everyone here. And we'll get started. Uh, everyone... Uh, come hang out and learn when the best time to do, to do, to is, that sounds a little weird, <laughs> but that's fine. All right. So we're talking about the best time to exercise to, to burn fat, but it's not just the best time to exercise. It's the best time to eat, the best time to sleep, the best time to journal, the best time to pretty much anything that has to do with body transformation, when's the best time to do it? And to think big picture, when is the best time to do it? And let's think of it through two lenses for now. Let's start with the beginner lens because we have a lot of people who are in this group that have yet to start their transformation. So if somebody is looking for the best time to eat, exercise, sleep, journal, and they're just starting out, when is the best time? Well, I can give the secret away right now and we can end our podcast in like 15 seconds or I can string it along. You, you no, know, it. all right. Each person is different, right? We yes. all have different needs, different wants, different goals, different backgrounds, different experiences, different, you know, fill in the blank. Yes. But to answer the question, it's when it fits into your schedule that you can do it consistently and you're getting the results that you want, right? Yes. But if you find what fits into your schedule, consistently, then that's the answer. And that doesn't mean that it has to be every day at five o'clock. Maybe right. on Mondays, it's at one time. On Tuesdays, it's another time. On Wednesday, whatever. But the consistency is over weeks, not just a day. So the most important thing, what it sounds like, the most important thing a beginner needs to do is, as you said before this call started, not get stuck in the weeds and to prioritize not for maximal results, but to pr uh, prioritize for adherence, prioritize sticking to it for the long term. And the best way to do that is by making it convenient, making it low pain, so on and so forth. OK, that makes sense. Yeah. So let's say somebody is just starting out. We're going to look through the frame of a beginner and then we'll go to like more of an intermediate after. But someone who's just starting, you had said someone who's just starting exercise should try to work it into their day where it's the lowest stress. So that might be, like you said, after dinner, when, you know, the kids are winding down, it might be first thing in the morning. You got to kind of, as you said, guess and check. You don't have to stick to 100% everything you lay out on week one. We have to adapt. We have to be flexible. We have to be malleable because that's where the learning takes place. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. Um, you know, eat when I, when I started this, you know, one of the first things I said was each person is different. And, and with that exactly. difference, that is our schedules, our family, our work, and, and everything that we're trying to manage yes. and be the best person that we can be. And right. We're trying to now incorporate someone who's new to this. Now they're trying to incorporate this new healthy lifestyle, which they really don't understand what that entails yet only because they haven't experienced it. it it's not yes. that they don't want to, it's just until you experience it, you don't fully understand everything that it covers. Sure. And you're, you're trying to manage all of this. And so day to day, it could change and there will be a lot of trial and error and that's yes. okay because once you find what works, you know why it works and you'll stick with it as opposed to me as a coach saying, okay, every day you have to do this at you know, whatever time. And you know, you can only eat 12 and a half grapes and like, really? Yeah. Or like you have to do cardio fasted to get the most benefit out of it. It's like, just make sure if you're, if you're a beginner, just get in the cardio if it's important to you. That might not even be the most important thing to burn fat, but like if getting in cardio is important to you, if by getting in cardio, you're more adherent to your other actions, which I know is very true for a lot of people, people will say, you know what, when I start exercising, uh, I lose more fat. It must work. And it's like, well, what is the correlation to that exercise? When you exercise, you probably eat better. 
when you exercise, you probably sleep better. Why? Because you're like, well, I don't want that exercise going to waste. It was so hard, <laughs> you know? So if that's true, then yeah, get in your exercise. Um, I won't digress too far. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I agree. And, and the same holds true for, you know, for eating. I, I get a lot of questions from clients, um, some, some brand new and some who I've worked with for a little bit as they get more into the healthy lifestyle, they're really embracing it. Yes. I'm asked, well, what time should I eat? Yes. I don't know. What time do you think you should eat? And, and I ask them not to be, not to dodge their question. I can tell them what I eat. And a lot of people say, well, yeah. when do you eat? It really doesn't matter what I eat or even what I eat. The question right. is, how is this going to fit? Given your goals, given your lifestyle, how is this going to fit with you? And there is trial and error. So yes. when we, when, if we talk every week, I'm going to, I may, depending on our conversation, may ask, you know, how to go this week with the food? And someone will say, oh my gosh, I couldn't get my meals in. Well, what were you trying to do? Well, I was trying to get them all in between like this little bitty like time period. I said, well, aren't you hungry? All those other hours, like, aren't you kind of hangry or, you know, cranky? Well, yeah. Well, then maybe we shouldn't do that, right? What's a better way to fit? And you will come up with that answer. I, I as a coach, yes. I may help you. Yes. But if you can do it on your own, I mean, I'm asking you, like, you tell me where is this going to fit? Because you're the one who's going to be following it. Yeah. Well said. Yeah, 100%. I think, uh, I think one of the best, I don't know if it's a trait. I don't know if it's a skill to develop. I don't know if it's a mindset. But one of the best mindsets, I guess you could say, that we could go in to this transformation with or our fitness journey for the first time or for the 10th time or this new time is to not, uh, where I'll say it in a positive way to be, you know, flexible and to get rid of binary thinking, this idea of either I'm on or I'm off or it's working or it's not. It's always a question, not of yes or no, but it's a question of how much. And by thinking through this lens, yes, it's a slightly more complicated because now there's many shades of gray instead of just black and white. But what that does allow you to do is have this flexibility to find the sweet spot. Think of it like when we were kids, right? Were we ever mad when we played Marco Polo or maybe when we were searching around the room and we didn't know where the item was and our parent would go like, you're warm, you're cold, you're warm. As a kid, do we ever go like, God damn it, mom. Like I give up, just tell me where it is, right? Like, no, that doesn't happen. Why? Because we're, we're, we have this level of playfulness. We don't have to be right 100% of the time. And we can kind of be flexible to find that. When we get rid of this flexibility is where we lose really the opportunity to create strategies that will last forever. You know, like you said, you know, I know a lot of people want the answers. Just tell me what to do, please. Just give me the answer. I don't want to have to think, but while that can work, that isn't the thing that's going to be sustainable forever for you. Why? Because what works, like you said, what works for you, what works for me, it's it's different, right? I mean, we all have different life experiences. We all have different beliefs. We all have different things that we prioritize over others. So we have to test and iterate. That is the most important piece of this whole thing. Agreed. You know, people um, by nature, yes. right, we especially in today's environment, we want immediate gratification. And, and I'm no different, right? I want it now. Don't we all? <laughs> However, Let's go. I know. However, doing it, following this, it, it's not a sexy way to do it, but it's going to provide yeah. you with sustainability. So That's when you're faced with challenges in a week or two weeks or a month or uh, in a year, whenever it is, and you have to figure out, okay, how am I going to get my food in? Or yes. how am I going to get my exercise in? You have more tools and you're better equipped to do it. That's what yeah. it boils down to. hundred percent. So if we are thinking about sometimes, maybe we can give some, some with that big pre-frame in mind, right? Let's talk about some of the best times that, you know, maybe scientifically could be, or maybe not even scientifically, but anecdotally, like for the individuals could be a good time to exercise, to eat, to sleep, to journal. And we'll give, you know, we'll give some thoughts here. Do you, do you want to go first or? want me you, to you start off i'll chime in sure all right all right so best time to exercise so when it comes down to adherence that's the most important thing we need to think about for if there's a pyramid of priority 
Adherence is at the bottom, bottom meaning most foundational. So once you've gone above adherence, now you can start looking at a couple other things. We can start looking at how you feel when you exercise. Because yes, anyone can just beat themselves into the ground, but you want to create as little resistance as possible to exercise. So is it feel better to exercise in the morning or to exercise at night? Ask that question. That is a way better question to answer than where am I going to get better results? Above that or right in line with it is where do you have the most energy? Meaning if you have more energy, of course, you're going to be able to what? Give more to your workout. And it's a feedback loop. If you can give more to your workout, you have better accomplishment afterwards. You feel, wow, I feel great. And you want to keep doing it, which stacks on adherence. If you feel worse when you do it, well, guess what that does? It makes you go, oh, why am I even doing this? I'm wasting my time, blah, 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 blah. And it rips at our self-esteem, therefore making it you know, less sustainable. One level above that is we could start to look at, uh, I'll say meal timing. So that goes into how you feel, but meal timing will dictate part of how you feel going into a workout. Now, this is where it is highly individualized. I have gotten into a rhythm of, I, I, I don't eat in a caloric deficit though. Right now I'm just eating them to maintain. I eat or I uh, work out in the morning fasted without uh, any food, right? Start my workout. I feel great. I have plenty of energy. Now for somebody else who's in a caloric deficit, they might find, you know what, if I work out in the morning, I feel like hot garbage and that's okay. Maybe you do it at noon or maybe you do it in the evening. The most important thing is just that whatever you're doing, it feels good. And look at us. We're just going right back to adherence. <laughs> this is it's so funny. But th I mean, there there is some science that says like when you, uh, you know, like your body goes through cycles during the day. So like when you first wake up in the morning, your internal core temperature is lower. So around noon is where it rises to a, almost around the highest point of the day. So there is some research that says, hey, wait until your internal core temperature is the highest. So that, that way you can uh, be the most prepared or ready for exercise. But again, we're talking about like nuances. We're talking about things that really don't matter that much. Um, unless you're a professional athlete. And even then, professional athletes, a lot of the times ignore it for adherence principles. You know, like even Kobe Bryant, like there's so much data that says, hey, doing three practices a day isn't good for you. Right. But what it was good for was for his mentality. He was an animal and he was an animal. And that mentality is what drove him forward. Not necessarily the, you know, of course you have to do the practices, but you know, it's, it's mentality over everything. And that really is as funny as it sounds, the most important thing. If you are looking for this to be the last time. Yep. And that's something profound, profound to say, to say, Hey, this is going to be the last time I start. And if this is going to be the last time you start, you have to focus on one thing and one thing only, never stopping again. And how do you never stop? It has to feel good. If it doesn't feel good, you won't keep doing it. And the thing I always used to tell my clients when they were first starting is, look, I want you to be in week six, seven or eight, be down, you know, five to 10 pounds, have your clothes fitting better, starting to feel good. But I want you to look around and say to yourself, man, this is... This feels too easy. This doesn't feel like it's always felt in the past. It feels uneasy because of how easy it feels. Good. That's where we want you to be because that's sustainable. Think about your daily life, right? Like that's how you want it to feel. Like you're just living your life. Anyway. Well, and I going back to um, one point and, and I'll, yeah. I'll probably put in a few. Yeah. Some of this, will, a lot of this will be trial and error and doing it, trying it one morning. Uh, if you're not used to working out in the morning, don't just try it one. You have to do it a number of days in a row or however many times a week that you exercise to yes. really determine if you're a morning person for working out. The first day that you do it, if you're not used to it, your body's going to hate you. Like, it's gonna hate you. like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? You are like, I, right. So you, you need to give yourself several days, a week yeah. or two or whatever it is to really determine yeah. if you like it or not. And the same goes true for an afternoon workout or an evening. Yeah. But I have a I have conversations with my clients very often about morning workouts. Yeah. The second is whatever time of day you work out, even during this trial and error period, 
you need to set yourself up to succeed. So that means in, in my mind, you ha you know what workout you're going to be doing. You're not just walking in or turning on an app or whatever and going like scrolling through going, um, boy, he's good looking or she's hot. I'm going to use that one. Right. <laughs> like, there's, a, there's a method or a purpose behind what you're doing. The second part of being prepared is I work out in the mornings like, like Ryan, like coach Ryan does and think back to, I don't know if you had this childhood, but when I was younger, much younger, I believe my mom sent my clothes out the night before. Like I vaguely remember that I was yeah. young and I don't even know if I was dressing myself yet. I probably was. That's probably why she had to put out clothes. So at least I sort of matched. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So now, even now, um, I lay on my clothes out the night before. So I when I same. get up, it's you know, contacts, brush the teeth, put on the clothes that are all laid out, like from shoes, everything. Yes. And, and I have my own studio, so I don't have to get in my car, fortunately, and drive anywhere. But if you're going somewhere else or even in, in your own house, you have your water bottle ready. Or if you take a pre-workout, it's ready. Like everything yeah. that you need is ready. So you have no excuses not to work out. If yes. you work out during the day and you're going somewhere, you have your bag packed the night before with your, with, make sure you have your shoes. Don't use that as an excuse, right? Your shoes. <laughs> if you're a woman, make sure you have a sports bra, make sure you have socks, Yeah. Your, your water bottle, everything that you need, and then set the alarm on your clock or your phone or whatever you use. Yes. You want to set yourself up to succeed. Yes. And re remove as much resistance as possible. Yeah. I, I do the same thing. So I, I guess I need to train, change my strategy and not just look for the, uh, the hot guys on the app. I need to, uh, hey, no. <laughs> if that's what worked for you just, and you're yeah. getting the results you want, have at it, you know? No, no. So it's, it's so funny you say that because literally, well, we didn't talk about this ahead of time either, but literally, uh, on Saturday, I believe, I had found myself at a point where I was just like, you know what? I think I need a little more structure because I was going into my workouts with like, all right, I generally know which direction I'm going to go to, but they weren't as intense. So I'm trying a different, uh, different format, but I literally wrote out all my workouts and this is just the, this isn't where I actually track it. That's kind of just the, uh, the little yeah. idea, but yeah, it just right. feels so much easier going into a workout and almost turning off that side of my brain and just going, okay, what do I, you know, do it. You know, there is no time thinking about what I have to do. Right. It's just, I'm, I'm going to get it done. You know, yep. we had a comment that came in and this is from Patricia. Good morning. Uh, Patricia says, does exercise at a certain time increase metabolism more than others on a very high level? No, uh, no. I, metabolism is metabolism. Metabolism is your body's uh, process at taking energy from food and turning it into energy in your body. Um, that process does not change uh, regardless of when you exercise. Um, you're always gonna burn roughly the same amount of calories through uh, thermogenesis, which is just simply like your body is gonna burn calories from digestion because it raises your core temperature. Um, but yeah, no, you, that doesn't, doesn't really change. I think, um, in today's day and age, the marketing around like this increases your metabolism, like eat turmeric, it increases your metabolism, like caffeine increases your metabolism. If you think about it, <laughs> like it, cause it increases your heart rate, which allows you to burn more calories, but all it's doing is just making your heart beat faster. Yeah. So it's like, is that like fat burners? Those increase your metabolism, but it's like, they don't, they just make you burn more calories because they increase your heart rate. Cause they're a stimulant, <laughs> not necessarily what we're looking for. Um, What's more important in Patricia and, and anyone else is that you are exercising. You're, yes. you're the time of day doesn't really affect it. And something that Ryan said earlier in, in just now, a lot of people, um, and this is natural, like this isn't bad, but it's it's natural to really dive into the details. If if we step back and just look at exercise or eating or whatever it is, but in this case, exercise at a at a high level, um, 
it's frequency, intensity, duration. Mm -hmm. When someone gets into um, the, the very, very, very little details, right? The tiny, 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 those are for the elite athletes. And in elite, I mean the top 1% in the country, if not in the world, those are really elite. If, if I were working with someone who was going into a, a fitness competition, would we be very focused? Would we, would we be more focused on nutrition and training than someone who is overweight and, and just wants to be healthier, right? I want to lose some weight. I want to feel better. I want to sleep better. I want to be there for my kids. Absolutely. I'm going to focus more on, on nutrition and fitness for that. But that's, that's a very small number of people. You know, most people are focused on getting healthier and yeah. better. I, I would say kind of in a nutshell, our, our philosophy is really the 80, 20, 80, 20 rule, right? It's like, what is the 20% of things I can do that will get me 80% of the result. And a lot of people, when they start their journey, do the opposite. They focus on like the minutia that isn't going to really get them much of any extra result. It's just going to weigh them down and stress them out. Or instead, like, let's just focus on the big picture, the 20%. What is the 20% of everything out there that's going to give me 80% of the result? Or we can even go and say, hey, what's the 5% of stuff? What's the 5% that will give me 95% of my result? And you know, depending on how zoomed out you are, it gets really simple, you know, like again, in a nutshell, it's all in line with human psychology, human nature. We're always going to work to move away from pain and towards pleasure. So things have to feel easy and they have to be pleasurable at some level and difficult things can be pleasurable. I'm not saying everything should feel like you're getting a massage. That's not what I'm saying. Difficult things can be pleasurable. I have grueling workouts sometimes but they're grueling, you know, on the surface, but deep down, they're very pleasurable. Why? Because I'm doing something that not a lot of people can do. And that makes me feel significant. So I'm going to, you know, keep doing it. That's what it can be for you too. But on some level, it's got to be pleasurable. You have to be getting a positive thing from it because if it's all just willpower and all just pain, we won't, we won't do it, you know? So anyway, 20 minutes, we're going to round it up here. Hopefully this is beneficial. If uh, if it wasn't, let me know. If it was, let me know. If you have any questions, comments, drop them in. Drop them in the comments. Uh, Coach Aaron and I will come back and answer these as well. And if you'd like to meet with any of our coaches on a one-on-one -on -one RN body transformation planning session, I'll drop a link above. You can click that, schedule it, and uh, see if one-on-one -on -one coaching could be a good fit for you. See you soon. Enjoy the week. Bye. <laughs>